difficult. When you play them, you know, back to back to back, it's even more difficult. Um, you know, one of the things is we don't create our schedule. You know, some genius does. I mean, I, I don't know who that person is, but they got to figure out what facilities are available, what TV games they're going to be, what time they're going to start. So as a coach, I look at it and says, hey, control the things you can control. Don't worry about the things you can't and, and just know the difference. So uh, we can't control that. We're going to do the best we can at preparing for each and every game. Go to Michelle Kaufman from the Miami Herald. Hey, Jim. Um, obviously, you know, a lot of people, Duke is not ranked this time, which is, which is very rare. You know, they're having not as great of a year as they've had before, but Kyle Filipowski, um, you know, obviously is having an outstanding year. How do you see the matchup between him and your team inside? And what are the specific challenges of, of trying to contain him? Well, I look back on last year's uh, game and uh, they had Mark Williams, who was like 7-1. Now, now they've got uh, Derek Lively, who's 7-1. Uh, they had Dan Caro, 6'10". They have, have um, Kyle Filipowski, who's like 6'10 or 11. Uh, so there are some similarities in terms of height. And Filipowski is a very aggressive offensive player. And uh, But last year, uh, I mean, they were an outstanding team. But we played very well at Cameron and were able to come away with a two-point victory. And we have a much different team this year. We're shorter. Um, we don't force as many turnovers and we don't defense a rebound quite as well as we need to. And Duke's team is, is right now one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the country. So we've got to guard Filipowski and those big guys very well. We've got to keep them all off the offensive boards while still not letting their guards kill us from the perimeter. And we just don't know yet. I don't know if anybody knows if Jeremy Roach is going to play. Go to Adam Wickensee from the Sun Sentinel. Hi, Jim. Um, you know, we're going to talk to Jordan Miller in a few minutes. Uh, just how have you seen him uh, develop and, and how crucial of a player is he? It seems like he doesn't quite get, you know, maybe as much pub as like, you know, Isaiah Wong or you know, the guys who transferred in and stuff. Just how important is it to have him be so solid for you guys? Yeah, Jordan Miller is great. Love him. Love coaching him. He's an outstanding all-around player. Uh, he's going to have the first responsibility of guarding Kyle Filipowski. Uh, last game against against Syracuse, he was responsible for being the middleman against their zone. He had seven assists. Uh, he's a double-figure scorer, uh, and he's a very hard matchup. He's almost a mismatch no matter who tries to guard him. Um, he's He is an all-conference caliber player. I, I don't know what other coaches or what the media thinks, but Coaching him every day and watching him play, he is clearly one of the best players in the ACC. Go to Cal Friedman from WVUM. Cal. Thank you. Coach, on the topic of Kyle Filipowski, I was wondering if with Duke's size, with Filipowski at six foot ten, with Derek Lively at seven foot one, would you be nervous about foul trouble in this game? <laughs> I'm nervous every game about foul trouble. That hasn't been our strength so far. You know, if we get in foul trouble, we got issues. The good part is our bench is coming along and, and getting playing better and better and more and more. I thought Bensley Joseph, uh, um, uh, Harlan Beverly, and Anthony Walker did a terrific job. Christian Watson came in and he, in a short period of time, gave us some nice minutes. Um, and I think A.J. Casey is back from a shoulder injury. So I feel very good about our bench. I feel very good about our team, uh, but the ACC, as I say all the time, the regular season is a marathon. You you gotta you gotta really grind it out. Go to Marcus Benjamin from Canes County, Marcus. Hi, Coach. Uh, wanted to talk to you about some of the slow starts that your team has uh, kind of started off with. Um, what do you test to that, and what do you want to see? particularly from your team, to avoid those slow starts on this uh, three-game road trip? Yeah, I'm going to tell them to get off to a better start. I, you know, like against Virginia, we got off to a great start and, and took the lead. And 
and I don't know if they ever took the lead on us, but uh, we like it much better. You know, the other day you said slow start, but against NC State, we were ahead like nine to two. Uh, against Syracuse, we were ahead early by nine points. But eventually, you know, things settle down and, and becomes a close game. And sometimes we fall behind, sometimes we push ahead. But I, I think the game is like professional prize fighting. And what I mean by that is there are rounds. Every four minutes is a round. Just like in prize fighting, every three minutes is a round. And it's a 10-minute uh, war. I'm sorry, a 40-minute war and uh, 10, 10 rounds. So you got to win your share of those rounds if you want to win the game. Go to Barry Jackson from the Miami Herald. Barry? Hi, Coach. You've done such a good job over the last 10, 11 years in the portal, hitting on most everyone that you've found. Could you explain what the process is like that you've instituted over the last decade in terms of how many assistant coaches do you want reviewing tape of the portal guys you pursue? Do you make sure you study a lot of tape of each of them? Do you do background checks of them as people as well? Wow, that's a long question that needs a long answer, Barry. So here's the way it begins. First of all, in the summer and the fall, we're recruiting high school kids. Then most of them make their decisions. During the year, um, we, we are focused on our team. Once the season ends, we have a manager who's responsible for checking the portal every single day and updating the coaches. Then my coaching staff does a serious background checks, watching video, narrowing the list down, and then providing me uh, the, the video and the list that I should look at. But it's a priority list. It might be only three or four or five guys. Once we establish who those guys are, we try to get some background information from uh, the people who are important to them. Might be an AAU coach, might be a parent, as to whether or not the University of Miami would even have a reasonable shot. And then... Uh, you know, over the years, things have changed. Like in Shane Larkin, he called us. Angel Rodriguez, he called us. But once Angel decided to come to Miami, he told us we should go after Sheldon McClellan. So, and Kamari Murphy called us because we had recruited Kamari out of high school. And he called me and said, hey, I made a mistake. I should have come to Miami. So he transferred. So every situation is different. With, with Jordan Miller, he played at George Mason. Everybody at George Mason said, hey, if you're going to transfer, you go. You should go play for Coach L. All right? In Charlie Moore's case, he played at DePaul, and Bill Courtney had just been an assistant at DePaul. They had a relationship that went back, and, and we actually recruited Charlie out of high school as well. So he took a chance and, and joined us. So uh, Norshad O'Meara, he's uh, from Nicaragua. He's Spanish-speaking. He went to Miami prep. He felt like Miami was home. Uh, Ni Nigel Pax, or what kind of year Charlie Moore had and was leaving, he felt like he could uh, fill that that role. So we've been very fortunate. My staff has done a great job of identifying the right guys. Thanks, Jimmy. Got time for just a few more for Coach We'll go back to Cal. Sorry that. Just to follow up on the answer that you gave about how well your bench has come on, did you envision the way that Harlem Beverly's played in this last two home games against BC and Syracuse? Well, here, here's what I would tell you about Harlem, and I've said this over and over again. Back surgery is, is very often a career-ending surgery. Harlem was very, very conscientious in rehabbing and slowly but surely making his way back. When he did get back and cleared to practice, he was well out of shape, overweight, and not in a position to do what he's doing now. I asked him to be patient with himself, not to worry about me and playing time, but just get yourself in good shape, be, you know, have a good mental approach, have a positive attitude, make a total commitment to trying to be the best that you can be, even though right now you're not as good as we know you can get. And he, he, was very diligent, worked very, very hard, got himself in, in what he's in now, great shape, uh, and he still has back issues. You know, and I can't remember, it was after, I think, our NC State game, before we played Boston College. So, um, yeah, 
I can't remember. Was it NC State yeah. before Boston College? It would have been after Georgia Tech. Oh, yeah, after Georgia Tech, Harlan's back was killing him. I told him, uh, don't practice. Take Monday off, take Tuesday off so that you can play on Wednesday. And he did that. He felt great on Wednesday. I played him. Had his back still been bothering him, I would have gone to somebody else. All right, last question for Coach L. Seeing just one hand up, we'll go back to Michelle to wrap it up. Hey, Jim, I want to ask, uh, considering the, you know, the size inside of Duke and, and Norchad with you guys trying to manage um, him, you know, his fouls, how do you balance a guy who is, you know, he's so energetic and, you know, you've said so many times and we see him the way he, he wants to go so hard every single play. Um, how do you how does he or how do you guys coach him to, you know, not to lose that energy and aggression, but at the same time, keep him on the floor, especially when he's playing against seven foot guys? Yeah, I was listening to the TV broadcast last night of the Virginia, Virginia Tech game. And they were talking about different guys who were going to be on the all defensive team. And Norshad was not uh, listed as one of the guys that they felt was, you know, high on their priority list. And I think to myself, how can he not be? He's one of the leading rebounders. He has to guard guys who are much taller than him. He blocks shots. He gets steals. Uh, I think he's had a tremendous impact defensively. And I think he should be uh, considered for the all defensive team. But he does have the habit of going so hard that in all likelihood, there's going to be games, not every game, but some games where he gets himself in a little bit of foul trouble. What's nice now is a guy like A.J. Casey and a uh, Anthony Walker and even Favor Ira, who can give us some quality minutes off the bench. And as long as Norshad can you know, stay out of foul trouble, he's going to play 30 minutes a game. He's in foul trouble. The guys off the bench have to contribute a little bit more, especially at the defensive end and rebounding end. Because yesterday we had a conversation with the players, and I, I told them that they need to rebound more. And they said, well, every time a shot goes up, we just assume Norshad will get the rebound. <laughs> so, hey, we need other guys to rebound, not just one guy. But he, he has to discipline himself. But habits, you don't break them. you got to develop new ones. And, and the habit we're trying to get him um, to develop is keep his hands straight up, use his feet and his body to play defense and not his hands. All right, Coach, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.